Okay, I'm going to get very personal now. That's fine. So my job is I'm, I, I give massage to people, okay? Right, yes. So I am feeding their addiction in a way because I'm making them feel good and they keep coming back for that feeling. Well, there's a couple of ways you could do massage that, don't, that doesn't do that. So, for example, why does a person need a massage? What do you feel? What do I feel? Yeah. Why would a person come to you for a massage? What, what's, what's the common the reasons com the why common, people come? The common thing is actually usually stress. Right. So they feel stressed out yeah. in their life and the stress is in their body. Is that not true? Not always. Not it's, always? It's a mixture. Yeah. Where, Quite where often they're it? emotionally stressed. Okay, so they're emotionally stressed. And Most if they're emotionally them, stressed, their stress is always in their body, by the way. Yes, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. So, so, so the stress is present in them. They're coming to you to relax. Mm -hmm. Some of them. Some of them are coming to you to, so that uh, they can have the reasons why they're stressed to be addressed. Now, if you're a teacher, you would be focusing on helping them through the reasons in some way, rather than just massaging them. They walk out the door, and then next week, they come back for their next massage, massage them, walk out the door, next week they come back for their massage. They're very, very happy, but nothing's changing in their life. And I would put to you, if nothing's changing in their life, then we're not a teacher. Mm. We're just pandering to an addiction of the person. You can, however, use massage in a completely different way. You can use massage to confront people quite, quite a lot emotionally and help them through the process of connecting to why they're under stress. So it's a beautiful way of doing that. And it also can be quite a gentle way and relaxing way of helping the person do that. So if we're massaging them, and when we find a tight spot in their body, and we massage it quite firmly, and then they feel the resistance of their body, so they try to tense up. Then we g take them through the process. Now just relax. Just go through this process. Breathe into mm -hmm. your diaphragm and allow yourself to feel what you feel when I'm touching this point here. Right? And if we allow ourselves to do that, even if we don't have any connection with their guides or anything like that, because if we do have a connection with God, we can even tell them what it's about in their body. But if we don't have a connection with their God, we can just ask them to feel, and now we're teaching them. We're teaching them how to feel their body and how to feel what's going wrong with their body and why their body is in stress and why their body is in pain in certain locations. And as we massage them, that pain, if, if we are doing our job as the masseur and a teacher, the, job will event, the, the massage will eventually trigger that emotion and then while they're on the table, they will feel that emotion as some do when they're on the table. Yeah? And we would allow and encourage that process actually by our words as we're doing it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now what we're doing is instead of just feeding their addiction, we're now starting to help them grow. And that's what teaching does. Teaching helps a person grow. Whereas if I just massage them every week, massage them every week without confronting any of their emotion and without confronting any of their life, I'm not teaching them and I'm not helping them grow. I am providing them with a service, but they're coming back for the same service, the same service every week, which is an indication that nothing's changing in their life and we need to help them through the process of changing something in their life. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, so a lot of the times, so I'm not saying that massage is not a passion for you, because for some people it is. However, we need to, to really challenge to see whether it is a passion or not, mm -hmm. We need to start confronting what, what is our goal. Is our goal just to make other people happy? Or is our goal to also help them grow? Because when people are growing, they're not always happy. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And if we are, just, we are just allowing a person to be happy without any growth coming into our life continually, then we have to start questioning what's our motive for doing that. And our motive can generally only be addictive in nature. It, we get a feeling by doing this. And we might also get some money. And we might be addicted to the money and the feeling. And, uh, and when we stop, uh, and it's easy to challenge the addiction to the money, all you do is you start doing your massage by donation. Mm -hmm. 
and then when nobody, somebody gives you no money, feel the pain of that, <laughs> and then you realise whether you're in your passion or not. You see, it's a bit like playing the guitar or singing. If I'm singing and nobody's giving me any money, I would still, if it was a passion, sing, would I not? But if I'm, if I'm singing, and I only sing when people give me money, but now money is a part of the addiction that's influencing the true desire. So I might still desire to sing, but obviously I have other addictions in play as well, which make my desire impure. So how would you change the addiction to how you feel after you give a massage? Um, I, would, I would take away the money issue by doing it by donation, firstly. Mm -hmm. Secondly, what I would do is I would, uh, I would sit down after every massage and feel my own body and stay in myself rather than connecting to the other person's emotion about what they're feeling for me. Now that requires quite a lot of practice initially because initially if we're addicted to the other person's emotion we'll be seeking their feedback. We want them to go away feeling good. And I'm not saying that to have them go away feeling uh, changed is not a good thing because it, it is a good thing to have them go away feeling changed. But if they go away feeling good every time without any change, I have to start questioning myself as to whether I'm in the addiction or not. And I would suggest that if that's the way things are happening with all of my clients or the majority of them, then I am definitely in the addiction <coughs> with my clients. So I'm providing a service only for what I get out of it and the money that I get out of it and the, the look on their face that I get pleasure from when they walk out the door. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Now, with every single job that involves another person or you're performing a service for another person, the reality is you would enjoy doing it if it was a desire, uh, no matter what the job was. So, for example, if I, if I really enjoyed cleanliness, then I would enjoy being a garbage collector. All right? And it wouldn't worry me if I got paid for it or not. <laughs> in other words, if I noticed garbage on the side of the road, I would pick it up and put it in the bin straight away. Do you understand? If I really enjoyed cleanliness. And how many times do we walk down the road, see some garbage on the road, and walk past it? Right? If we do that, we don't really enjoy cleanliness. And so if I was a garbage collector under those circumstances, what's the only other reason why I'd probably be doing it would be for money. And so straight away I'm not doing what I desire. But if I desired cleanliness, then I'd be very, very happy being a garbage collector. For two years of my life I was a window cleaner, or I cleaned windows for people, and I loved it. It was a fantastic job. And I really enjoyed it. I look forward to going to work every day. And the main reason why was because I enjoyed making things clean um, and it didn't worry me whether everyone was happy or not happy. <laughs> Most people were happy because, they, because if you enjoy what you do, then everybody else generally also enjoys what you do when you give them that service. So there is a lot of uh, work on the planet that we can be doing that if we were really in our passions, we would connect to our passions and really enjoy that work. And then there's other work that we often are doing that we don't really like at all. And, uh, and therefore is not a part of our passion at all. Yeah. And we need to allow ourselves to feel our emotions about our passions and desires.